Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and welcome to Knife AQ. This is episode 128, the knife series where I answer all your questions, whether they're sharp or dull. This week, we're talking about some knives that are so good in their respective categories that they've automatically become the only right answer to those questions. So, what are those questions? Let's get into it. So if you're new to this series, the questions we will be talking about today were submitted in our comments section below these videos. So if you have a question that you think it might be worthy of inclusion in a future episode, drop it in the comments below. And if you and I happen to agree on that, well, then it just might show up in a future episode. First thing today, first question is from Lorenz Schwartz. Hi, DCA. Thanks for all your work and insights over the years. Thank you. Uh, your YouTube series kind of helped me rediscover my knife blood. Uh, here's another triad question. We were talking about some uh, three knife collections the other day, um, or a few weeks ago on uh, this series. Uh, here's another triad question for a different background. I'm planning some digital nomadism combined with some long distance hiking. Sounds cool. That's one of those things I being uh, like tethered with a, a mortgage and a kid don't get to uh, think about experiencing these days. So in some ways I envy you, sir. I also like knowing where my bed is every night. So there's pluses and minuses to each of those, aren't there? Um, I will, I for sure will carry my Victorinox Huntsman, maybe even the Cyber Tool. Could be a good pick for the uh, Diggle Tool Nomadism that you're talking about. Uh, then I'm kind of settled on the Boker Urban Trapper. Also for the hostile kitchens with blunt knives. Makes a bit of sense. You got a bit of a pairing knife vibe there. But what I'm missing now is a fixed blade for the hiking part. Not too heavy, but still capable for the occasional camping chores. I'm curious for your suggestions. Cheers. This question kind of sparked uh, the, the topic that all the questions today are going to revolve around. And that is because this is sort of a little bit of background, there's this kind of trope or meme in car culture how, you know, the Mazda Miata, Miata stands for Miata is always the answer. I'll do it this way so Thomas can do little graphics like Miata is always the answer. Anyway, because there's so many things you can do with a Miata that really fit in with, you know, that car culture. Uh, I happen to own one as well. But Mora is also always the answer <laughs> for questions like this. The Mora knife, the Mora companion in this case, but you know, take your pick of pretty much anything in their lineup, is so good at being an affordable, yet still very, very capable tool that it's almost hard to recommend anything else. So we're gonna talk about this. And this is the, uh, the Miata principle in knives. Mora is always the answer. We'll talk about why it's right for you in particular. You're looking for something that's going to take up very little space and very little weight because you're you know, probably schlepping most of your stuff around with you. In sheath, here is that knife. We've got a you know, 4.3 inch blade, I think it is. And this one right here, just for scientific sake, let's tear this out. We're dealing with a 4.1 ounce package for a partial tang knife here with a Scandi grind. They're very sturdy and they're very cheap to buy. This is $17. Doesn't take up a lot of space, doesn't take up a lot of weight, yet they're still, like I said, very capable. You can get it in carbon or stainless steels. So you've got an option whether you're you know, doing land-based stuff or you want maybe to do some boating on this, uh, this trip of yours, canoeing, fishing, what have you. It's gonna work there too. Sandvik 12C27 on this particular uh, model as well. That's the stainless grade that, or the stainless steel that they use which is very tough stuff, sharpens up really, really nicely, takes a super keen edge. It just works. Also, for your thing in particular, Scandi grind, like you'll find on here, they're very good at carving wood. A Little bit less so at other tasks, it's a bit of a specialized thing, but the blade here at two and a half millimeters thick is thin enough, you could get away with some food prep with this. It's not what it's optimized for, but this is gonna be a lot easier to clean out than the Urban Trapper right there. So you might not even need the Urban Trapper for this scenario. You can save a little bit of weight and money there, but then you wouldn't have a nice flickable everyday carry either. So pluses and minuses to that as well. They're, they're so good. Any more knife in the lineup that 
it's hard to not say just buy Amora and be done with it. But I think the acronym needs to be Amora over really anything. That's the first really good thing Thomas has, has like probably ever said in this this series. I'm sure I've said something before. That's really like he he didn't tell me this before we came in here. That's really good. Mora Mora over really anything. <laughs> we should just end the video right here. <laughs> okay. Nope, nope, we can't do that. In the interest of going beyond though the 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 class killers like the Mora. I'll try to give a couple extra options for these, um, just for the interest, uh, the sake of interest there. You want something that's going to be inexpensive in case it gets lost or confiscated on this trip. Uh, you want it to be nice and tough. If you want something with a more conventional grind than a Mora, or at least as you know, the Western world thinks of as a conventional grind, a non-Scandi in any case, check out the Cold Steel SRK Compact, the SRK C. Uh, price on these, just over 40 bucks, so still quite affordable. You've got a full length tang with the rubber over molding around it. SK5 carbon steel, about a four or about a five inch blade here. We'll use a bit more uh, tactical vibes and certainly a bit heavier um, with the sheath. This one is, you know, 7.7 .7 ounces, but you maybe get a little more strength or the feeling of durability out of this uh, than you might with the Mora. In any case, this is also one of my go-to options for an affordable survival knife too. It's just not, like it offers great value, but the Mora offers more value. Value. Mora over really anything. That's fantastic. Like we're, we're definitely using that in the future. That's great. All right. Matt Young has our next question. Hey DCA, I've recently been dialing in my knife tastes and I've found my niche. I like knives that look good enough to carry to church, but be tough and durable enough to get anything done. My job requires me to do a lot of random things from breaking down immense amounts of boxes, doing yard work, to going to formal events. What would be your suggestion? Um, my personal suggestion, I would probably have discrete knives for the work side and the fancier side, but I understand you're looking for something that blends both. And this is a type of situation as in many uh, questions that get asked in our comment section where it's hard to not recommend the Sabenza. All right, Thomas, you got a, a you know, acronym for no. <laughs> Sabenza every, so I don't know. <laughs> we'll work on that. Maybe we'll have something. We probably won't. Something in the comments. What, I mean, what, what's the Z gonna be? You guys tell us, guys and gals, Sabenza. What does Sabenza stand for? Really, the, you know, whether you go with the uh, the base model, which starts around 500 bucks, it's a premium knife for sure, or the inlaid versions that uh, get a little higher. This one right here is a Knife Center exclusive, which we're going to have more of in eventually uh, with the green canvas micarta and double thumb lugs here. Um, this really does blend like a hard use aesthetic with a very refined aesthetic. It's a titanium frame lock. It's got the strength in the locking mechanism there. And yes, there are stronger locking mechanisms out there, but to what degree of ultimate strength you need for your job, a frame lock is quite sturdy and yet it's refined. Not every titanium frame lock out there has this same, you know, refined quality, even if it might have the hard work style of construction going on, but they feel great. They look great. You've got a very stable blade when it's in its locked up position. These things are you know, famous for their quote unquote bank vault lockup. That is the, uh, the trope in our world for this knife. And they look good. I'm, I'm babbling a little bit here. Like how do you sum up the Sabenza? I know what you do. You watch our uh, Beat the Icon Sabenza video that we did. Link, we'll put it right up there. That can give you some other alternatives to the Sabenza, but this is the right answer for so many things. It might not be the most popular answer. There's certainly a lot of folks that, you know, that bag on this knife that don't think it's worth what it is. And that's a fair, fair viewpoint to hold, but there's a reason it's still around and it still sells because it's just that dang on good. I bought one of these myself. So other options, like I said, check out that video. Um, but for me, it would, I would find something in that titanium frame lock genre. I think that's really going to blend those two uh, two worlds for you, Mr. Matt. 
Uh, some other, another possibility might be something like this Zero Tolerance 707, but this leans probably a little bit more towards the, you know, the, the more elegant, the more, you know, formal event thing. You've got ball bearings in the pivot here, which aren't quite as dirt proof as the washers in the Sebenza. And this may or may not be hard use enough for your needs. I would have no problems breaking down a bunch of boxes for this. I'm not sure what you're using your knife for in, you know, yard work terms. Um, so I don't know if this is going to fulfill what you need there, but it's certainly got the elegant factor going down and plenty strong lockup with the frame lock right there. Price on this knife is uh, about 288 normally. Actually, we've got it on sale at the moment we're filming this uh, for 239.95. So a bit of a, uh, a break on that one. So check those out. Hope that helps. Next question uh, is from Bradley. Any suggestion, suggestions for a three and a half to four inch folder? Looking for general use, possibly used while camping, but also good for a backup for self-defense and would like to stay under $50. Again, this is a question that in my mind immediately narrows down to one model over all others because it's it's proven at this point and it's still a great value. Starting at about 34 bucks, maybe yeah, about 34 bucks nowadays, it's the Ontario Rat One. It's not uh, an elegant design. It has a bit of a, a cumbersome look, I think on the page, but in hand, this is a knife that is never going to disappoint in its performance. You've got a full flat grind, 3.6 inch blade available in OS 8 or D2 for a little bit more money. It's got a blade shape that'll do all your everyday carry stuff. It's got a blade shape that'll do pretty much any outdoor thing you can manage, whether you're using it as a small hunting knife or if you're using it for just whittling around the campfire or any other kind of general outdoor pursuit. Washers in the pivot here, great for the outdoor stuff. You've got a full length handle with full length liners for a lot of stability. And while this knife may not be like the most overtly tactical looking thing in the world, it's got some features that, that really help it in that regard. One of those is actually the pocket clip right here. It's a four position pocket clip and pretty much the, at least from, from the folks who I've talked to who have actual tactical training, not myself, the quickest way to get a folding knife brought to bear that doesn't have some sort of pocket deployment system is actually a tip down pocket clip. So, you know, your tip of the blade is pointing down while it's in your pocket because you can draw the knife from the pocket and get to the blade with fewer maneuvers, fewer readjustments than if you're pulling the knife out when it's tip up and you have to you know, move your grip up, move around and then open the blade. That's kind of the bulk of the reason why that works on a tactical design. And then you've got this you know, 3.6 inch basic blade that still has enough of a point there. You could do pokey pokey things with it too. Hard to not recommend the Rat One for anyone who wants an affordable, versatile knife, especially if there's any kind of outdoor you know, facet involved into what you're looking for because it's got the grip behind it to do some things like wood carving without straining yourself too much. A good fixed blade is obviously uh, has ways to make a, a more comfortable handle for that type of work. Folders are always inherently going to be compromised in some regard for that, but the Ontario Rat One does a decent job of mitigating that. For one other option here, I did talk about the pocket deployment system. Check out the Bird Kara Kara 2 with the Emerson opener. This comes in about $45 right now. 3.75 inch blade, 8CR series stainless steel with which metallurgically is nearly identical to the OS 8 in that Ontario we just looked at. You've got you know, a very versatile blade here, full flat grind, drop point, thin enough to slice, maybe not thick enough to baton with, but you probably you know, I wouldn't necessarily recommend batoning with either of these knives. Where it lets down a little bit is it's not, it doesn't have that big girthy handle that you might want for whittling and wood carving. You could certainly still use this in an outdoorsy scenario. It's just not gonna be as comfortable with a lot of cutting. Think about how much cutting you're going to probably be using it for in said scenario, and then you can decide whether, whether or not that matters enough to make a difference. But you do have a four position pocket clip here as well. You could mount it the same way as the Ontario, or you could use that pocket deployer. So if you angle the blade towards the back corner of the hem of your pocket, as you pull the knife free from your pocket, it will rotate open. 
and be ready to cut very, very quickly. So the backup tactical uses here, this might have an edge on the Ontario, but hard to not, hard to not recommend the Rat 1 in that case. Next question comes from Tazos Zacharias. It's a sweet name. Uh, hi, hello, David. I'm living at a coastal area, and when the school year ends, my five kids keep me almost all day long at the beach. What knife would serve well, considering that food prepping is a major task? And a discreet option would be preferred. Thanks. All the time I get questions about this, which uh, often revolve, even though you didn't mention this trait specifically, stainlessness. If you're going to be around the water, I have folks asking, I need something that absolutely won't rust on me. How does your mind not immediately go to Spyderco's salt series of knives? Absolutely fantastic for a reason. Think about steel for a second. Stainless doesn't necessarily mean stain proof. There are varying degrees of stainlessness. For instance, OS8 or the 8CR on the knife we just looked at is stainless. It's not particularly stainless in some ways. These will start to corrode or patina sooner than the LC200N or the H1 or even the Magna Cut that you'll see on some of Spyderco's Salt Series knives. Now, does that mean the 8CR is going to rust rather quickly? No, probably not. With everything there is that, that range though. But beyond the blades, which Spyderco uses on this series, all of the components in the handles are also tested within an inch of their life to make sure that they are as completely stainless as humanly possible right now. So this is a package right here that will not rust away on you. You're not going to have to worry about, you know, putting, away, putting it away wet and having to, you know, clean it up the next day because the action's frozen, frozen shut or anything like that. It's fairly lightweight, which is cool. It's brightly colored in this case, which for uh, our particular question right here and questioner right here, which I want to say his name again, Tazos Zacharias may or may not be a good thing. You did mention discretion and I'll get to uh, something of that in our alternate take here. Um, but it's lightweight, it's super easy to use. It's a great everyday carry shape. And with the full flat grind right here, this is gonna work pretty well at food prep too. This type of blade shape, it just works great. Slices well enough, you've got the corrosion resistance, easy to clean, so, so good. And so, so many things when it comes to the salt series, they just do in a way that no other knife out there that I really know about, apart from some really exotic stuff, does, at period. So it's hard to not recommend that. But we do have an alternate. It is another Spyderco. It is the Spidey Chef. And while not technically part of the salt series, it follows essentially all the same rules as the salt series in terms of its stainlessnesses that you can go after. Titanium frame, discretion, it's, a more gray package, so it's not as bright, and it comes with a wire deep carry pocket clip to keep it really nice and tucked away. Yes, you can get a deep carry clip for the Spyderco Pacific Salt, or many of the Salt Series knives as well, but you still have the green handle here, or you could go with the Spyderco Endura as well as another alternate option. It's not as fully stain proof as the Rust Series, but it's still gonna be a good option. And you can get much more discreet colors on that one too. Just wear green shorts. There you go. Change your uh, your wardrobe to match the knives. I don't hate that. But the gray here is certainly more discreet. You've got LC200N, which is 99.999% stainless. It can take a patina, but it has to be extremely extreme, extreme conditions for that to be the case. And this is designed even more so with food prep in mind. You've got a little bit of knuckle clearance there if you're doing if you're doing any cutting board work. This is not something you're really gonna like rock chop herbs and garlic with, but for slicing through things, especially on a cutting board, the geometries and the angles here work exceptionally well. So check that out. Price on this, it's expensive. It's 283 bucks. Uh, the Pacific Salt II we just looked at there is 135 and a little bit of change. The Enduras are, uh, are a little bit less than that for the VG10 models anyway, which is also a good stainless steel. Hope that helps. Next question comes from Eric Taylor. Uh, As a fellow scout, you know the highest rank and honor in BSA is the rank of Eagle Scout. My son will be earning his Eagle Scout in about a month. And here's where I apologize because I've had this question for quite a while and, and didn't get around to answering it. I apologize, Eric. Uh, I was hoping to gift him a great EDC pocket knife as, at his court of honor. He is an athlete, scholar, and outdoorsman. 
Any gifting ideas for a 15 year old that will grow into the knife? We live in Missouri, so a four inch limit on blade length, but no laws on auto assisted locking, dot, dot, dot. $100 limit. Are you an eagle? Uh, sadly, no. My brother is, but I, w one of my regrets from uh, my younger years is not finishing out the, the rank of eagle. I had all my requirements done for life, which is the rank below, uh, but I never actually completed the court of honor for that, so technically I'm a star scout. Uh, wish, wish I'd made it all the way though. But congratulations uh, to your son right there. Gifting for so many things comes down to a Swiss Army knife. And that is going to be the specific answer for you here. The particular model may vary depending on situation. But let's talk about the Swiss Army knife as a gift option in general first, because this is so often like it's harder to, to do a better answer than this. They're cool, first of all, whether and, and this is something that goes beyond just knife people. And that's part of the strength of this. Whether you're a knife person or not, a Swiss Army knife is cool. You know, you could give this Ontario rat one to someone who's not a knife person and they probably aren't going to think, oh, cool. Swiss Army knife. Oh, cool. They're socially acceptable, which means furthers not only that, but also means you can use it in more places without kind of thinking twice, without blinking at it. So many good things. For your son right there, I would recommend the Farmer X. Comes in at a cool $74 nowadays. You've got the Alox aluminum handles, which look nicer and certainly feel a bit more uh, you know, worthy of a milestone rather than you know your basic red Swiss Army knife handles, which nothing wrong with them, but they don't exactly feel special. The Alox feels special. And this has a pretty well-rounded set for everyday carry stuff, you know, athletics. I don't know what knife you're using in athletics unless you're a knife throwing, in which case no, none of these suggestions would work anyway. But then outdoor stuff as well, this works really great. You have, in addition to the main blade on the same layer, you've also got the awl. Technically not an awl, I guess, without the, uh, without the needle hole in there, but a scraper slash borer works well for many things. You have the can opener and bottle opener. Chances are he might have some beverages to crack open in the uh, in the future if he's going to college. I don't know. Can't, can't speak for anyone else. You've got screwdriver tips on both of those. Flat head over here, smaller flat head over here that also works on certain size Phillips heads. You've got a nice wood saw, which as far as like this size of like pocketable wood saw on multi-tools, Victorinoxes, they work great. Like if they're not the best, they're kind of tied for the best with Leatherman. Those are pretty good too but fantastic for the size. And you got a nice pair of scissors, which is useful just about anywhere. That's what I would suggest for your son and for the other folks in your life. They just aren't sure what to get. Swiss Army knife is always the answer. That's another acronym we need. Yes, I always say like, leave your questions in the comments, leave your acronyms in the comments below. So we've got Mora's, Mora's nailed, you know, Mora over really anything. Thomas nailed that one. Sebenza, we need an acronym for Sebenza. We need a acronym for the RAT1, maybe just RAT. Uh, and we need an acronym for SALT. That's better. And, and SAC, we could, you could do SAK for Swiss Army Knife. Challenge is on comment section, do it. All right, no lightning round for today. We're gonna go straight to our final questions of the day, which is of course meaning it's time for our most serious question of the day. I gotta move this out of the way for this. I need the space. Ominous. Hey, Hajaha says, Dear David, if you had to go into battle, whether it be against orcs, zombies, aliens, etc., what knife is in your hand? Well, I don't know if we can call it a knife, but it wouldn't be a question, a video about the best, always, most often answered, best answers for the category without an appearance of the sword carcass spitter. Carcass spitter? Splitter. Our unofficial mascot here at the Knife Center, the yes, I know, has some rust spots on it. We haven't used it in a while, and I keep meaning to clean it up, and I haven't yet. But it's fine. Because you ain't taking this bad boy down. We have another of most serious question of the day, a bonus, which comes from Martinez Sanchez. Hey, DCA, you are very knowledgeable on knives and know the best ones for every situation. Uh, we'll see about that. Can you tell me then what is the best butter knife I can buy for maximum and total butter coverage? Depends on how big your bread is, but I'd say it's the Sford 
butter spreader, carcass splitter, right here. Carcass butter. You can spread a pound of butter of that in one swipe. Tell me how you're gonna beat that kind of efficiency. I wanna warm it up first. Maybe, perhaps. We have one more most serious question of the day, which comes from Robert Sibula. If Bigfoot could carry a survival knife, what would he carry? Do I have to say it? He will. This forward carcass splitter. Because really, like nothing else within reach was big enough for Bigfoot hands. So by default, in this case, the carcass splitter takes it. Well, that's all we've got for today, folks. Thanks for sticking around. I really like this topic. It was fun. I hope I explained it well enough. I feel like I might have been babbling there uh, or dancing around you know, the exactitude of it a little bit. But I hope you guys got the concept I was going for. Leave me your acronyms in the comments if you have better alternate suggestions to the goats in all of these uh, categories, let me know. And if you have a question you want to be uh, considered for a future episode, make sure to leave it down below as well. If you wanna get your hands on any of these knives, check out the links in the description as always. Those will take you to knifecenter.com where we've also got our knife rewards program still going strong, which means when you buy one of these knives today, you'll get to earn some free money to spend on a future one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center, and that's the acronym master himself, Thomas, behind the camera. We're signing off. See you next time.